Hi there. Um, hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Chris Myers. I'm one of the directors of Complete Physio. Um, uh, I'm just going to do a sort of 10 minute video um, just on what we've been doing over the last few weeks um, um, as a private practice uh, and hopefully people get ideas or find it useful or find it reassuring that they're doing similar things. Um, this comes about from being a member of the uh, Musculoskeletal uh, Partners Network, which is essentially a group of private uh, um, a group of private practices or directors of the private practices um, or people involved in running companies um, uh, and we joined actually about a month ago but obviously with what's been happening uh, it's been a really good forum uh, for sharing ideas getting information um, across um, and so and we've been doing calls every week or every uh, twice a week actually uh, more recently and it's been a really good forum um, to ask the questions that it's quite hard to get the information on um, and it's been a it's very been very useful so I would encourage anybody that uh, runs a clinic be it a one-man band or a, a larger clinic uh, to join the, the network uh, it's currently a pound uh, to join um, and so I think it, it's certainly a, a worthwhile thing particularly at the moment when we all need some support to get through uh, what is happening so I just thought we'd talk about uh, what we've done at Complete Physio and how we've adapted to obviously having our clinics closed so the first thing that um, we've, we did is obviously try and transfer as many of our patients um, from face to face uh, to um, uh, remote consultations, um, which wasn't too challenging because, you know, you can use Zoom, you can use FaceTime, you can use WhatsApp. And at the moment, we because we use TM3 software, um, we're just starting to use their video uh, from uh, TM3, which is actually really simple and you don't need to set anything up and you just basically press a button. Um, so that's something that we're going to uh, try and set up over the next uh, few days and start using. And obviously it depends on what your patient prefers to use as to what you use. I've used Zoom. Uh, I've found it to work no problem uh, whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, and we, we I thought, well, I, I wasn't sure how, I thought we may get about 10% people on, uh, take up on the remote consultations, but it's probably been around 25%, something like that. So we're seeing a couple of hundred um, we do a couple of hundred remote sessions. We did last week, we did over 200 last week, and this week it's looking quite similar. Um, and what's quite encouraging actually this week is we've started to see um, some new patients actually booking in. So brand new patients, um, which hopefully is a good sign that um, some of those, that, that this will continue and we will get some more new patients because most of the consultations we've been doing have obviously been existing patients or patients within our database. So we've been sending out newsletters uh, with useful information on there about how to set up their desk at home or some exercises to carry out. Um, and I think that's brought a few people in as well. So these are older clients that have um, booked back in for maybe another problem or, or an ongoing issue. Um, so the remote sessions have been going well, but again, I, I, I do expect it to continue to drop off the remote sessions. Um, and certainly if we're planning for what, what we're doing at complete is we're planning for a three month shutdown. Um, hopefully it will be a month. That looks unlikely. Hopefully it will be six weeks. Maybe it's probably more likely to be eight weeks, but we're planning for a 12 week shutdown and our cash flow forecasts are, are done, are done off that, um, with the remote sessions going down. Hopefully they stay similar, but we're assuming they're going to go down as this, uh, continues on. Um, in terms of our admin staff, uh, we've we've furloughed eighty percent of our admin staff, um, but we are staggering that furlough um, because certainly last week everybody was working. There was a lot of work to do, and obviously the work is dropping off. One thing that we were really successful with last week, and actually the directors were involved in it as well, is chasing debt. And this is going to be a cash flow game basically over the next two to three months. So um, it was really good last week to get a lot of cash in. Um, it takes a lot of time to do that. Um, you need everybody on board, including the physios as well, that are treating the, the patients. And, and as a director, I, I rang some patients as well, uh, which seemed to work quite well. And our admin team did an awesome job of, of getting a, a lot of cash in last week and obviously contacting the insurance companies and chasing debt and then ringing patients and getting the excesses and that sort of thing. So we did really well with aged debt. And obviously you still need your admin to do that moving forward because the worst thing you can do is do a reasonable amount of remote sessions and then got the, not get the money in. 
And a lot of those remote sessions for us will be self-pay, some will be insurance, um, some will be insurance with an excess where you've still got to get the money in. So you've got to have a really clear system and really you've got to get that money in on that day. So if we have a client that has a consultation, um, basically that patient will be sent an immediate invoice by the physio uh, just on the system and then our admin team will send a link or they will call up. I, I, I think calling up is, is still the best way of doing it. Um, so you need your admin staff moving forward to support your remote sessions and obviously get the, the money in and getting that cash in is absolutely key. In terms of business rates, I think there's already been quite a lot of said uh, on this forum on business rates. Um, essentially, we have no help at the moment for business rates. Um, two things I would say. One is um, try and engage with your local MP, write them a letter. We've certainly done that. Um, try and engage with your council um, and again, write them a clear letter. Um, and then the other thing is to sign the petition um, that's going around that I think will be in one of the links to the uh, musculoskeletal network partners, um, partners network. Um, and you need to sign that. That, that needs to, it's only on about two and a half, three thousand. Um, we need to get to 10,000 really to make a significant difference in terms of getting it to the next stage, maybe and get, get it to parliament. Um, so physios, chiros, osteos, podiatrists, et cetera, et cetera. We all need to sign it. We all need to get our colleagues to sign it. We all need to get our friends to sign it. Um, and I would strongly recommend that you send it out to your database and at complete, uh, I think we have around 10,000 people that have opted in for newsletters. So we will be sending a specific email asking our patients for their help. And I think lots of patients do want to help. Um, and hopefully that will get the signatures up. So if we can get to that 10,000, that would be great. In terms of rent, um, obviously everybody's situation is slightly different. We have some gym, we have some clinics that are in gyms and we have some standalone clinics as well. And uh, I think the key thing is to just engage with your landlords, speak to them regularly. You know, they need you there as much as you need them. Um, and I think this is just a very open dialogue and a process that you need to go through. It's been said before, um, rent free periods uh, or, or sorry, delaying rent is great. Um, but at the same time, if you delay it for three months, you're just basically um, going to have a problem further down the line. So that's probably not what you're after. You need something. Um, you, you need more relief than that. And just remember, whatever relief you ask for, they're probably not going to agree for agree on, and they're going to try and negotiate back. So don't go in with what you know what you might accept. You need to go in with what you really would love in in your in in your in 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 the ideal situation, and then work backwards from there. But certainly, it's time to have a, an open negotiation there, um, and be very open about it. You know, your clinics have had a significant reduction, as lots of other companies have. Um, we normally spend quite a significant amount of money on um, uh, Google AdWords. Uh, Facebook advertising is something we've recently done. Um, and I, I think, I don't think this is, I mean, from our point of view, um, we closed the doors a couple of weeks ago and on the first week we dropped down about 50% on advertising on all sites, on, on the sites that we've got. And, and then um, we dropped it down to 25% and now we just have a very, very small budget running for remote consultation advertising. Um, we've, we've shut down all Facebook adverts. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we've, so we are running just in the London area. We're still running some remote consultation adverts. Um, but I, I just don't think this is the time to, um, you need to basically be very careful what you spend. I don't think this is the time to uh, start uh, spending too much money on AdWords, et cetera, where actually it's very hard to track whether that advert turns into an appointment. Um, unless you're only online booking or something like that, then it's gonna be very hard to know whether that money was actually worth spending. Um, so yeah, for us, we've made the decision to drop our advertising massively. I know that some clinics have talked about actually keeping the advertising going and because you're, adver because you're now a remote service, in theory, you can advertise to the whole world. Um, and certainly UK wide, you could certainly do that. Um, but we've, we've decided not to do that. Um, I just don't think this is the time to be um, too brave uh, because particularly if you look at it, this is month one. So month one at the moment, your bank account probably still looks reasonably good. 
get to month two, not so good. Month three, if we get there, you know, the bank account is going to be down a long way. Um, and if it goes over month three, then obviously that's going to get a little bit more worrying as well. So I wouldn't be too brave with your, your paid advertising at the moment. I think even if you get a couple of remote, even if you are quite successful with your remote um, paid adverts, it's still going to be significantly less than what you would get in your clinic. Um, other cost savings, uh, we use Trustpilot and Doctify for reviews. So Trustpilot for physio and Doctify for our ultrasound guide injections. Um, and actually both of those companies have been brilliant. They've frozen our subscription um, or given us a significant discount. Um, but obviously we still have the reviews and we still have our widgets on our site. So that's the problem. Sometimes you need to be clear when you do freeze your account. If you freeze it, that's great, but you need to make sure that uh, you keep all your reviews because you're going to need all of them and you, you need them now, but you're going to need them certainly when you open up again. Um, we use TM3 diary management system. Um, and I must say they've been great. They've, uh, they've given us a significant discount on our diary management system. Um, and you've got to remember it is in the interest of these other companies to, um, to support, you know, we do need to support each other through this time and obviously we need them, but they need us and they certainly need us to survive this period um, because they're going to want us to continue on and obviously charge us the full amount uh, when this is over. Um, one thing we, we, the other thing we have done is we've, um, we've reduced our, we have a company that does some SEO for us and that's an area that we've actually spent quite a lot of time over the last week, really trying to get to grips to what we're actually spending um, this money on and that's not just on SEO that's on other things as well so it's actually been a really good time as a business to literally look at all the outgoings and working out maybe what can come in internally uh, even in the future when we do open up but also getting a bit more of an idea of um, some of these things that we don't always exactly know what people are doing um, and whether or not uh, some of that can be done by ourselves um, or probably what will happen with us is we'll do a little bit ourselves but actually we'll be able to work a lot more with these companies and get a lot more out of them um, because we have more of an understanding of, of what they're actually doing uh, the other things we've been doing is you know going through our policies and procedures so making sure our infection control procedure is up to date etc etc and it's very hard to find the time to do that when you've got patients and, and when you're running the clinic. So it's been really good and we've, we've all got tasks that we're getting on with. And, and actually, I think at one point we might be quite grateful for this time where we've been able to actually look at these processes and, and find out a little bit more about how we're running our business and where we really need to spend our money. Um, so yeah, I think that gives you an idea. Um, I, again, I just say uh, it'd be great to have some of you on the calls that we do each week. I think the next one's next Tuesday. It's a pound to join um, and it's been a really good support network for us. Um, and um, I'm, I'm sure uh, you guys would find it useful as well. Okay, many thanks.